Hi, my name is Paul Prusnell. I'm a professor in the Electrical Engineering Department at Princeton. And I'd like to tell you a little bit about my research area today, which is the field of neuromorphic photonics. Um, this is a field that we started at Princeton about 10 years ago. And it is a blend of uh, information processing uh, from neuroscience as well as photonic technology. The reason that we're interested in neuromorphic photonics is motivated by the following problem. Uh, there's an increasing demand for more and more computation, um, such as for artificial intelligence. Uh, for example, YouTube has over 100 videos uploaded every second, and all of those videos have to be inspected for their content. Autonomous vehicles require more and more sophistication. All of this requires more computational power. At the same time, there are limitations in terms of the physics of making electronic chips smaller and smaller. Uh, the power requirements are not met by today's electronic chips. And so, we look to neuroscience, uh, particularly the human brain, is a very powerful processor. Uh, it is able to compute using about 100 billion neurons with thousands of interconnections between them. Uh, it does about 100 or 1,000 petaflops, which is 10 to the 15th floating point operations per second. And it does this with only 10 watts of power. If that were compared to a supercomputer, such as the IBM Summit, uh, it's able to implement only one-tenth of the number of petaflops using a million times the power. So there's something about the human brain that can teach us about processing, uh, and that's where uh, neuroscience comes in. What is neuromorphic photonics, therefore? Well, neuromorphic photonics is building little optical neural networks on silicon chips. And why would we want to do that? Well, uh, doing, uh, using photonics allows us to process signals at the speed of light. This is very fast, of course, and uses very little energy. In addition, light does not interact with light, and therefore we can overcome the crosstalk problems in electronic interconnects that limit their density. And finally, we can make clusters of photonic neurons of different colors and then reuse those clusters in a network to scale the network to very large sizes, very much like cellular networks can scale to very large sizes. The kinds of problems that we're working on in my lab range from building devices and designing them uh, to looking at ways of putting them together into architectures and actually fabricating uh, these chips. Some of the projects, for example, would be designing and building lasers that process optical spikes, very much like neural spikes, but a billion times faster, much larger processing power. Furthermore, we can make entire networks of these photonic neurons on chips. In addition to that, we look at applications and how to program these chips. So for example, we're developing algorithms that allow, allows us to enhance uh, problems like stabilizing hypersonic aircraft or detecting malware before it gets into a chip. In order to do this, we have a state-of-the-art photonics laboratory where, as I said, we can design, build, and test these photonic neural networks on chips. Accomplishing this, of course, requires a team of students. Uh, this team of students that you see here is more than half undergraduates, sophomores, juniors, and seniors, and some very talented graduate students and postdocs that work hard together um, as a team. As you can see, we not only work hard together, but, but this group plays together. Here they are in Zion Park hiking and Bryce Canyon on horseback, um, so we have some fun uh, at the same time. Well, with this, we've written a textbook called Neuromorphic Photonics uh, that is now used in a brand new course at Princeton that'll be offered for the first time uh, this coming spring. And in order to keep this going, of course, we need you. We need to find uh, a select group of talented students who are highly motivated and who are interested in working together uh, as a team. The backgrounds and interests can be wide ranging uh, from physics uh, to optics to computing and communication systems. All of these can contribute to our project. The common theme, though, is that everyone in this group is keenly interested in developing the next generation of computers and communication systems. Thank you for your attention.